Okay, so here now uh, we have my heavily modified uh, oven for co coffee roasting. It's a, it started off as a 38 litre oven, rotisserie oven. So I have uh, removed one of the uh, one pair of the heating elements and replaced it with a much larger U-shaped one that you can see below. Okay, it's a bit out of focus now. So there are no more heating elements on top. Uh, what some people call the browning element has been uh, shifted below. The, the connections have been shifted below. The uh, thermostat and the selector doesn't work anymore. Um, I suspect uh, the selector was spoiled because I suspect because of the much higher temperature involved in coffee roasting. Air temperature alone, uh, there's a little probe behind there. It's a 3mm probe. Um, air temperature, I can hit up to about maybe 280, 290 degrees uh, Celsius. So there's a little fan to help draw some air in to cool the, to cool the rotisserie motor as well as um, for the... There's, there's another fan actually to for the convection fan so it draws in a little bit of air into the convection fan chamber of course it makes the heaters have to work a bit harder but i found that this way with this little fan and this little it's actually a shaker from um, from one of those uh, protein shakers that the little ball so i have a little gap here what it does is it allows um, air to escape so that's how i avoid having a burnt smell in my beans so right now what i'm doing is uh, i'm warming up the chamber to about 275 degrees it's a big mess because this is not something that i wanted to keep it's just something that i wanted to see it work uh, below that's a uh, that's a voltage uh, regulator and um, I can't remember what's the exact term. It, it actually up, upscales the 12 volts to uh, about a 32 volts for the rotisserie motor. And there's a little meter there that kind of tells me um, how much uh, voltage and uh, current I have being drawn by the motor. And that's the speed controller for the rotisserie motor. And uh, that one is just for fun actually. I don't really think I need it because if I'm not wrong, that's a 40 m um, solid state relay and this thing is only drawing about 2003 as you can see it's, it's not drawing much okay, it's gone to sleep for a while but at full load at about 240 250 volts it draws about yeah it draws about there about it doesn't cross uh, one uh, or rather 10 it doesn't cross 10 amperes so at most i'll have about 2003 2000 um 2,040, uh, uh, 2,400 uh, watts. So that's just for fun. I dug it up from an old uh, PC. And uh, that's about it. Like I said, it's very messy. It's not something that I want to keep. I'm moving on to something after this, which I will use my experience gain from this to make a much more presentable and durable. And here we move on to a homemade, uh, I drew all the holes myself, a homemade uh, cooling tray. So there's a motor attached below this uh, this uh, pot or whatever. And it turns and then there's a, there's a pretty powerful 12 volt fan below, which uh, sucks air in and at the same time it um, kind of sucks uh, the, the shaft through as well, any remaining ones. So again, this is my oven, I am about ready to load the beans now so here we have the beans uh, they have just passed their first minute of roasting that's about 650 grams of uh, Sumatran mandolin inside I will uh, show you a photo of this uh, funny looking basket later on it's just something that I made for fun because I just felt like doing something that day and over here you can see the main uh, heating element, the one in the U-shape has come on. So because uh, it's much larger, so usually it takes time to heat up. So now we are at about five minutes of roasting. I have uh, speeded up the rotisserie a bit because that's how I use it to actually bring down the rate of rice by speeding up the spinning. So it spends less time in contact with the hot zone below it. 
and right now we are about the eight minute mark and again I've uh, speeded up the rotor speed a little bit more to slow down the rate of rise I'm targeting for maybe about a first crack of around maybe 12 or 13 minutes and then uh, this is supposed to be an espresso roast so I'm planning to maybe go up to about 16 17 minutes okay, so we have the beans unloaded and in the cooling tray now so these beans are a bit tricky because they are wet hard, so moisture content is pretty high. Kind of uh, tricky to catch the profile for this one, but well, they are, they're not that expensive, so I will be trying again in the future. Uh, okay, they in real life they look pretty even actually, so you know the thing about uh, phone cameras, they're not the most accurate thing in the world. So, yep, I'll show you later on how they look like when they're cooked. Okay, so this is the end result. Um, okay, I said again, in, in real life, they look pretty consistent. Uh, only thing that I would say is it's not a very good roast uh, because you see a lot of um, cracking like this. So, Whereas in a good roast, you would expect every bean to end up looking like this, nice and um, smooth and uh, without any overly um, kind of like uncontrolled breaking like this one. I mean, of course, some people will say it's due to the bean defect as well, which I would say so. But I have also noticed a bit of a tipping in quite a number of beans on a... Um, on Arabica, it's not so obvious, and there's, there's a bit of a cratering here as well. So, it's not a very good roast. Took a total of 19 minutes. Uh, first crack was at about getting close to 15, so obviously something wrong there. A bit tricky to roast these beans because of the wet hulling process. Very, very high uh, moisture content. But, uh, well, let's see how they taste like. I'm not, I'm not expecting for much um, so again uh, Sumatra mandaling I I had a raw bean weight of 650 grams okay that's a bit too bright uh, and I ended up with um, 530 grams so that's quite a lot gone okay so now that the cooling tray has uh, has been unloaded let me show you what's inside it's basically very simple this is just a paint bucket and uh, below is a, uh, it's actually a flour sifter. That that small little thing there is a flour sifter. So with arabica, we don't get much shaft. Whereas if I were roasting libreca, this thing would be full. So that's a pretty powerful uh, motor down there. That the fan, it's from it's actually from a uh, cryptocurrency mining rig, uh, two point seven amps, twelve volt fan, pretty powerful fan at full power. That fan can actually lift up this bucket. So most of the time, uh, nowadays I'm running it at about 30-40% uh, with a little board here to restrict the voltage or whatever. Because um, it's a bit tricky because it's, it's a, as you can see, it's a four cable fan. So that's why it needs this little uh, board instead of just your usual uh, voltage regulator. So that's the bottom of the tray all very simple stuff that i made up pretty quickly at home so and i have to admit i didn't really plan okay so now we come uh, to the inside of the oven uh, there's a i actually got this from uh, it's actually the coil from a microwave oven why it's there is actually because you see i have this bar for the basket to rest on the rod of the rotary three basket to rest on so uh, this thing drops you see so as you can see this thing drops so when i'm loading and the oven is hot i don't want to have the door open for too long so that's why i pull this thing up to get the thing into position to make it easier for me to load the basket and once it's uh, loaded the rod is already inserted inside then i will loosen this so that there's no drag on the on the little uh, whatever you call it on the shaft so when it's loaded this is the basket one fine day i just decided to bend a spoon and fork 
uh, by hand and bolt on to use as stirrers. So again, if I wanted to load, I will raise this so that it's actually pointing up and I insert it pretty quickly and on the other side, then it sits down there. Okay, not the... Okay, there. Okay, so it sits inside. It's, this is actually the, the original uh, height for the basket. I, you, if you can see one big hole here, that's where I used to have the, the basket. I used to have the rotor 3 motor mounted outside. That's that's where the holes are for the previous uh, model, which in a way was better because uh, the model stayed relatively cool, and I had a heat sink on the gearbox. Uh, but after I increased the the power of the heating element, I decided to mount the model inside because I needed to raise the basket because uh, by increasing the power of the heating element and having the basket too near the beans would get scorched. Is it because in a way to simplify matters, coffee roasting in a drum is, is a compromise between uh, temperature and uh, the exposure of the beans to, to that temperature. See? So if I were to get the, the, the roasting chamber pretty hot and uh, have the thing, the basket spinning at a pretty high speed, the exposure per bean per second is much lower than if I were to have the temperature slightly lower but have the basket uh, rotating slower. So there is a compromise between the two to prevent the beans from getting scorched and to at the same time have them being exposed to the heat evenly and um, to go through the, the changes in the, in the roasting um, at the right times. So because I mean like if you're talking about things like development and all this crap so that's why uh, this if you play around with it is totally capable of roasting beans uh, coffee properly uh, because of the overly large uh, roasting chamber which is much larger than uh, something like a baymore uh, i would say it's actually very inefficient but well it wasn't meant for coffee roasting in the first place so it's just something that i modified it can roast coffee well i have uh, brought quite a few batches to the cafe and uh, for the grower and his uh, the, the grower of the beads he owns the the cafes and uh, also for his uh, senior baristas to try so once in the blue moon uh, i would say it's a fluke i'll be the first to admit it's a fluke i do get very good batches that don't lose out by much okay it's not exactly the same you'll be stupid and arrogant to say that it's exactly the same but it doesn't lose up by much to a commercial roaster costing over a hundred times this oven and all the modifications. So at the end of the day, the, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I'm planning to build a, a hot air roaster. So this is going to be either given away or junked. Uh, some of the parts will be scrapped. So this, this is kind of like a goodbye to this oven. It's uh, served me pretty well for more than two years now. And as I said earlier, I've had some good and great roses. At the same time, of course, I've I had a lot of crap, which is why I, I claim to be a master of bad coffee. Because uh, during the learning process, you tend to make a lot of crap. And uh, I, I'm lucky because I live pretty near to the grower's cafe. And I, I have met the grower personally on a few occasions where we spent hours explaining things. And he's a pretty nice guy. He doesn't say crap like, we don't compare apples and oranges. Although he has uh, large machines, uh, large uh, commercial roasting machines, he doesn't look down on the guy with the oven. And uh, as it, once in a while, I do get great roasts. Uh, so, well, it's an oven. So kind of like a farewell to it. <laughs>